My friend, it is great seeing you. I don't know how you're doing this, man, because I've been following you on social media. You have been everywhere. Like every moment you have been doing an interview for I don't know how long, up early here in Toronto doing this, man. How are you holding up? I'm good, man. I'm having fun. I've only been to Canada once, so this is, uh, I, I'm, yeah, I'm busy, man, but I'm, I'm having a great time. This is great. Well, look, man, congratulations on the single. Appreciate it. You know, thank you so much for coming to Toronto to promote this, um, because as you know, with uh, Canada right now, Canadian country music artists, I mean, huge. Yeah. Country fans, massive here. You're part of this now, man, because your music is spreading across this country, and we're loving it, man. Yeah, I love it. Thanks, man. I feel, yeah, everybody's been just super nice, super welcoming, and everybody seems to be loving the single, and I can't wait to come back and just start playing shows. You know, I, usually I start off with, you know, going through the whole thing about, you know, when you started music. Let's go with the difference, okay? Let's go right into it, because I love the fact with the video and everything else, fiancé or girlfriend is in on this or what? My fiancé, yes. Fiancé. Congratulations on that. Thanks, man. How did that all come about, man? You know, when, when her and I first started dating, we, she'd always, because she's an actress, and so she's in movies and TV and stuff, but she's never done a music video. She's like, oh my God, this is fine. She's like, fine, do a music video with you. And I was like, look, you'll never do a music video if you're just my girlfriend, right? And then so when, uh, when we got engaged, all of a sudden, you know, half a year goes by, we have the difference, the single's coming out, and then we're doing a music video, and I looked at her, I was like, why would we have anybody other than you be in this music video? We're getting married, right? And so we uh, we ended up getting, being able to turn this music video into this little time capsule of my life. It's my real life. It's her. It's our dogs, you know? And it's us pretending like we just met and we're falling in love again and everything that the difference is about, you know? And this the awkwardness of going from being casual to being permanent with somebody, you know, and being serious and loving somebody. And so, you know, 20 years from now, we can look back at this video and show our kids and be like, you know, hey, those were our dogs. That's Abby. That's Charlie. You know, that's us when we were younger, and that's cool, man. I love the way it all turned out. Is that where the song was originally inspired from you, from your relationship? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I did not write the single. Um, it was in the uh, middle of a pitch meeting, mm -hmm. and when I heard it, I, I called my fiance and I was like, "Babe, I just I found a hit, <laughs> but the problem is you've been you've been feeding me these lyrics for like two years, you know? Because she, I was like, I just didn't write it. Somebody else wrote our song for us, and she's like, "What do you mean?" Because if I text her love you or love you in those early days, I know better to do that now, right? So if I would say that, she'd always respond, I love you. There's a difference. And there is a difference. And, you know, like, so guys, there's a difference. I, it was funny. I was thinking about this the other day, too, because, you know, I'm old school. And I remember back in the day when I used to listen to my R&B and stuff, an album always had, like, a, you know, a slow jam or something like that. Of course. Country seems to be the only genre that still does it that puts in those I love you kind of songs. Why do you think that is? Other genres don't really do that anymore. I, I think it's just what country's all about. You know, it's just such a singer-songwriter. It's just such a, a singer-songwriter genre. It's such a an organic, real genre of music still that's in the mainstream and obviously r&b isn't one really in the mainstream anymore when, when you're in the 90s you could get that boys to men or usher slow jam that would be one of the biggest hits in the world whereas in nowadays i feel like country stepped in and taken over that missing gap uh in the market and everybody wants a good love song and everybody wants a good wedding song yeah. And so I, I think that the country artists that have successfully done it, the Thomas Rhett with Die a Happy Man, you know, Jason Aldean with You Make It Easy, you know, these huge songs right now, they, uh, they found the gap that was missing and they filled it very nicely. <laughs> I think so too, man, and you're doing the same thing. So let's talk a little bit about the career and how it all started because, uh, you know, from what I read, and you probably told the story a thousand times, it was your grandparents uh, that gave you your first guitar? First guitar, yeah. Guitar. So growing up, We'd always have these family parties at my grandparents' house, Christmas parties, Thanksgiving, any type of party, right? Any, any excuse to drink. And <laughs> my uncle and all of his buddies would always show up, him and a bunch of guitars, a bunch of beers, a bunch of dudes. They'd sit around and just start jamming. And I was just a little kid. And so I started not only just falling in love with music, but I started falling in love with live music and watching what my uncle with a guitar singing a song can do to a room of people. And how just music brings people together. And so I just... Immediately, I just started asking every year, can I get a guitar? Can I get a guitar? I'm ready. I want a guitar. And when I was 13, you know, I finally got one and uh, hit up my uncle. And I was like, dude, let me join the band, Bova. He's like, no, dude, you're 13, but I'll teach you how to play. I'll teach you how to play. And, yeah, and he taught me. And, you know, we, we still jam. Every time I see him, we play. But you're also listening, like, you know, you're a country artist, but you're listening to a lot of other music, too, at the same time. Yeah, and I still do. I mean, I, I, mean, I listen to everything. I, I think... To I don't like to limit my, my horizons. You know, I listen to everything from hip-hop to EDM to indie to rock to country, and I always have. 
Because the reason why I say that is because when I listen to the difference, that, that first part, I swear it's a rap. When oh. you do it, that, 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 you know, you got that, that. Is it a rap? <laughs> Definitely. It's a, um, I'm all about those lyrical flows. You know, I grew up in Northern California, close to the Bay Area. You know, uh, hip hop is huge out there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and then I, I, I really kind of started digging into artists like Jason Mraz when I was in high school and out of high school. And he found such a cool way to bring organic singer songwriter music with a hip hop influence. And so that was one of the coolest things about this song when I heard it. You know, I want you to be that hotty, rat and shoddy. I don't want nobody's body but your body, baby. It's just, uh, it's just, it's just smooth, you know. And I was like, I love smooth. Yeah, man, you do it so well too. But was there ever a thought that maybe you wouldn't get into country music? Because I know you took well, like economics or something like that. Yeah, I took a break. I was in a band. Uh, we were just like this pop rock band, you know. Like, right out of high school, we we're touring around for a long time, and everybody always thinks their first band's gonna make it, right? And um, my grandparents and my mom and everybody had helped me out financially to be on the road and chase this dream as long as if the band didn't work out, I'd go back to school. And so when the band didn't work out, boom, 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 went back to school, got a degree in economics. Uh, but I had promised myself that once I graduated, I was going to move to L.A. and pursue a career as a solo artist. And let's go into that because you've been going back and forth, L.A., Nashville. How has going back to two of the biggest um, music songwriting uh, places what did that do for you? Honestly, it was amazing. I learned so much in L.A. from so many just incredible people, from songwriting workshops, boot camps, everything you can imagine from like actual real classes to learning stuff to actual hands-on learnings. And then moving to Nashville, which is a whole other monster. Yeah. And To me, Nashville, I'm sorry to interrupt, to me, Nashville is the place for songwriting. 100%. And especially in country. If you're trying to do it anywhere else, I mean, obviously Canada is a whole different thing, but in America, if you're trying to do it somewhere else, you have to live in Nashville, Tennessee. It's where the entire music industry is. It is where every single writer lives. It is where every single producer lives, every label, every... And so when I moved there, it was all of a sudden I was introduced into this whole new world where I got to take everything I learned in California and figure out ways to implement it into a new system. And I think it's worked really well for me because all the stuff we haven't released yet, stuff we recorded, stuff I've written, it's, it's different. You know, it, it's got a different vibe. It's got... What I will call, people say, well, what's California country? And it's, it's nothing. It's, it's me. Right? It, I mean, obviously there's other California country artists, but my version of California country is me. It's my California comes to country. Like, what's your California? I was like, it's, a, it's innate. It's inside. You know? and, and, and you can hear it in the new stuff that is coming out soon. <laughs> That's what I want to get to. So when are we going to hear this, man? Is it going to be an EP album? Because I think you released an EP before. Uh, is this going to be an album next? Yes. Well, I released an independent EP about three, four years ago. Yeah. Um, just randomly threw some stuff online, and it helped me out quite a bit. But uh, we have recorded enough for an EP, but I do not believe we're going – I don't know. Nobody's told me yet. Uh, I'm excited to find out. We're either going to start dropping singles, uh, maybe an EP, or hold off for a whole album. Um, right now, we are just out doing this kind of stuff, meeting people, promoting the single, and – I'm assuming they're going to give me some information pretty soon. <laughs> okay, but how are you fitting in with all the, I guess, wedding plans going on, man? Oh, we haven't started. And what? I, I know, I know, I know. Um, like I said earlier, she's an actress and she's super busy. Yeah. Um, she's killing it. And she's been all over the place shooting. And I've been, you know, four months now on the road all over America and now Canada promoting the single. And we just, uh, we haven't really had time. And, you know, monies are, exp or monies are expensive. Monies are expensive. Weddings are expensive. And so we're uh, trying to figure out because we want to have a big wedding. We have so many friends and family and our, you know, our, our industry family now. And every, just so many people we would love to spend that day with. And we're just trying to figure out how to make it happen. And we want to get married this fall, but I'm feeling it's going to be this spring now, like a year from now. Makes but, sense. but we're going to do, have a national wedding. And uh, all of our family from the West and East Coast can come together in Music City and see what we do down there. And it's always a party in Nashville. I got a feeling this is going to create another song, so that's going to be the cool thing. But any chances you're going to be performing here in Toronto or in Canada? You're going to hit some of the festivals? Like what's going to happen with the rest of 2018 when it comes to your career? Uh, I, as of right now, I'm not booked for anything in Canada. Um, but that does not mean it won't happen. We, uh, I mean, I, every weekend I get new emails and stuff you know, for the next two months to play. So the rest of the year is getting booked very quick, which is amazing. So every weekend for the most part in America and a lot of you know, northern stuff, uh, you guys are pretty close to Detroit-ish. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, upstate New York and all that. Yeah. Yeah, coming around there. So if anybody wants to travel, you know, we're, we'll be up in those states of America, but hopefully Canada soon. All right, man. To know everything else that's going on tour-wise, uh, new music, whatever – 
Where do we go social media? Because people got to get on this. Because like I said, you are busy. You got performances. You got pictures. You got everything up. Where do we go social media wise? Uh, Instagram, Facebook, everything is just Tyler Rich. T Y L E R R I C H. Twitter is Tyler Rich Music. Tyler, thank you so much for the interview, man. Congrats you, on the music. Congrats on the upcoming wedding. I love it. Thank you, brother. Good to meet you.